thanks for the invitation and thanks for all of you to listening uh, to me today. And uh, I'll tell you about the higher algebra of ancient algebras in more sphere. Um, so first off, um, all the results that I will present today are taken from uh, two papers that uh, are on the archive. So uh, I won't have uh, much time to discuss everything. And I will concentrate on, uh, so this paper is ent entitled Higher Algebra of Infinity and Omega BS Algebras in Morse Theory 1 and 2. And I'll emphasize the higher algebra of A infinity part and uh, finish with uh, some words on uh, the more theoretic uh, applications. Uh, so disclaimer, this talk is going to be uh, algebraic uh, in uh, its first part. Uh, so I begin with some recollections on uh, A infinity algebras and A infinity morphisms. So first off, uh, an A infinity algebra is uh, the data of a coaching complex uh, with uh, whose differential I denote M1, and um, uh, an A infinity algebra structure on A will be the data of a collection of maps which have degree two minus n uh, and of arity n from A to A, uh, which satisfy the following equations, uh, which are called the A infinity equations. So most of you must have seen them already for, in the case of Fouquet categories, and the more convenient way, uh, most convenient way to visualize them is by representing the operation MN as RTN. So think of A as lying above each and entries and uh, A lying at uh, the outcome two. And uh, that, uh, the bracket of uh, differential with a corolla of RHN equals all the possible ways to uh, blow up my corolla exactly once. So M1 bracket MN equals uh, all the possible ways to blow up my corolla. M uh, identity, M identity. Uh, in particular, I have that uh, M2 is compatible with a def differential, meaning that it descends to a product on the cohomology, and M3 uh, encodes uh, the homotopy uh, lack of associativity of M2. Uh, so an, in, uh, an M2 descends then to an associative product on uh, the cohomology. So an infinity algebra is simply to be understood as the correct notion of a DG algebra whose product is homotopy associative. And the operations MN of uh, arity greater than uh, three uh, encode all the higher Korean homotopies which keep track of the fact that my product is associative up to homotopy. Uh, now for morphisms between infinity algebras. Uh, an A infinity morphisms will again be defined as a collection of arity n maps, this time going from uh, A and so n to B and having degree 1 minus n. So before my uh, higher multiplications at degree 2 minus n, now I have degree 1 minus n, and which satisfy the following equations. So I won't even give you time to look at them because the correct way to understand them is with symbols and not with uh, uh, letters. And so if I represent my operations Fn of RTN as two-colored corolla, where A is seen to lie above, above the blue entries and B is seen to lie uh, below uh, the red outcome, outgoing edge, uh, the operations of uh, the infinity algebra B as red corollae and the operations as the, of the infinity algebra A as blue corollae. Then my equations read as bracket of Fn, bracket of two colored corolla, equals all the possible ways to blow up my two colored, two -colored corolla above the gauge exactly once. So Fi1 plus one plus I3 Mi2 f below m above, and all the possible ways to blow up my uh, corolla below the gauge exactly once. The gauge being uh, my line that divides uh, the blue and red colors of my two colored corolla. So what do I mean by blowing up uh, below the gauge? I mean that I break my, my tree such that 
there is exactly one broken edge in each non-self-crossing path from uh, in incoming edge to the root. And this uh, corresponds to MS, FI1 to FIS, M in red and VF uh, as the two-colored correlate. Uh, one can check that uh, F1 is uh, compatible with the differential and that F2 this time encodes the lack of compatibility of F1 with M2, with the products. So F1 descends to uh, morphisms of uh, algebras between the cohomologies. And this way, an infinity morphism is nothing more than uh, a morphism of associative algebras, uh, a morphism of strongly uh, homotopy associative algebras, which uh, itself preserves the product up to homotopy. So this is standard material. And uh, now going uh, to the higher algebraic part. Um, First off, what do I mean by uh, studying the higher algebras and infinity algebras? Um, so the, the first most naive homotopic notion that would arise from uh, the previous recollections is uh, given two uh, morphisms between A infinity algebras, so A infinity morphisms. I would like to uh, give a meaning to uh, what uh, to the sentence F and J are homotopic. Uh, homotopic as A infinity morphisms. Uh, then, now that I have defined A infinity homotopies, uh, what would be a good notion of a homotopy between homotopies? And, uh, a homotopy between two homotopies, between homotopies, and so on. So, starting from a basic uh, homotopy problem and studying all the higher Korean homotopies that arise from this problem is called uh, studying the higher algebra of this problem. And uh, so first off, for the first part of the problem being that of A infinity homotopies. Uh, so drawing from uh, the PhD thesis of uh, Kenji Lefebvre Azegawa on the homotopy theory of A infinity algebras. An A infinity, homot an A infinity homotopy between two A infinity morphisms uh, will be a collection of maps of arity N from A to B again this time having degree minus n. So each time we go down by one degree, uh, multiplications two minus n, morphisms one minus n, homotopies minus n, and that satisfy these equations. Uh, these equations that have to be understood visually again, and I will do the same uh, thing as before for a infinity morphisms. So uh, denote uh, Fn as a two-colored corolla indexed by zero, uh, Gn as a two-colored corolla indexed by one, and Hn as a two-colored corolla indexed by zero one. So think of it as uh, F being uh, zero vertex, G being one, the one vertex of the interval, and zero one being the inner cell of uh, the interval, because I consider an, an homotopy. I have that the bracket of uh, the zero one two-colored corolla so bracket of Hn uh, with the differential equals first of uh, one minus zero uh, before uh, without changing anything on the uh, underlying two colored corolla. So Gn minus Fn. Then uh, all the possible ways to blow up my two colored corolla above the gauge uh, as before for infinity morphisms. So this is uh, HI1 plus one plus I3 and MI2, uh, H and M, so H below M above. And finally, uh, as for infinity morphisms, I blow up below the gauge. Uh, so same tree combinatorics, but now for degree consistency, I have some um, relabeling to do on the upper two colored corollae. Uh, and how do I do this uh, this labeling? I choose first to label only by zeros, so only Fs. Then I label exactly once by zero one, so uh, and then I label only uh, uh, by ones. So this corresponds to this term uh, M for the two colored for the red corolla. Only Fs exactly once H and only Gs. So 
only zeros, exactly one zero one, only ones. And this is this gives me something of the right degree. Uh, one can check, for instance, that uh, this is a satisfactory uh, homotopy relations because homotopy relation because it is an equivalence relation on the class of infinity morphisms, and it's uh, stable under composition. Um, so I've defined homotopies. Now I want to define homotopies between homotopies and uh, homotopies between homotopies between homotopies and so on. So this will be called this higher homotopies will be called higher morphisms. Um, I will denote uh, the standard n simplex as uh, the complete list of integers between zero and n, and uh, a subface of delta n by uh, a, a sublist of integers uh, corresponding to all the vertices uh, this face spans uh, in uh, the standard simplex. And I will introduce the following. Um, <clears throat> Uh, definition uh, taken from a paper by Macklon Smith. If I consider I a face of delta n, an overlapping partition of I uh, will be a sequence of faces of I that are such that that is such that the union of this sequence of faces is exactly I, and such that two consecutive faces overlap exactly once uh, at their maximum and minimum. So the correct way to understand this definition is uh, with uh, the following example. Uh, an overlapping six partition, six meaning that I have six subfaces of 0, 1, 2, will correspond to 0. Then it overlaps exactly once at 0. Then it overlaps exactly once at uh, 0 uh, of 0, 1. Then 1 overlap 1, 1 overlap 1, 2, 2 overlap 2. And uh, I will define, uh, uh, I define uh, in my work, uh, n morphism from between two a infinity algebras A and B to be a collection of maps uh, of RTM associated to each subface of the simplex with uh, the following degree, but this is not uh, important. And that satisfy the following equations. So I will do the same gymnastics as before. Uh, so the definition is as follows. I, for each subface of delta n, I consider a collection of uh, morphisms of all RIT from A uh, to B. So in other words, I consider all two colored corollae indexed by I. And I want to define uh, uh, differential relations satisfied by uh, these uh, operations. And it is defined, this infinity equations for n morphisms is defined as follows. So brackets of uh, the two colored the two index by uh, I, bracket of FIM equals first of the singular differential uh, without any changing anything on the tree combinatorics. And this is this sum. Then um, the, so the lower sum uh, corresponding to uh, blowing up um, my tree above the gauge exactly once. Uh, this is this Fi uh, Mi2 uh, part. Uh, and then I have some, uh, I, uh, then all the possible ways to blow up my underlying uh, two colored core below the gauge. But uh, again, I have some uh, relabeling to do on the upper uh, two colored corollae. And this relabeling is done exactly by uh, labeling by all overlapping uh, partitions of the face I. So if I have S two colored corollae, uh, I label by all overlapping S partitions of I. So this is uh, this part, uh, I1 cup the black cup ISI corresponds to uh, the overlapping partitions of I. And if I go back to uh, A infinity monotopies, uh, I can see that it corresponds to one morphisms uh, because a one morphism is the data of uh, 
two colored corollary index by zero, two colored corollary index by one, and two colored corollary index by zero one. So I will see the A infinity homotopy as the data not only of the homotopy, but also of the morphisms, the two morphisms between which it, uh, it defines an homotopy. And uh, the A infinity equations is a singular differential of zero one, all the possible ways to blow up above the gauge and all the possible ways to blow up below the gauge. And here the labeling that I do is uh, by only zeros, zero one, and only once. And considering only zeros uh, exactly once, uh, zero one, and only once corresponds exactly to all overlapping partitions of zero one. And uh, for the uh, homotopy, uh, more the people that are into homotopy theory, uh, I, point, I, point, uh, I point out that uh, this collection of uh, n morphisms, in fact, fit into uh, a simplicial set between uh, infinity algebras, and uh, that uh, this simplicial set is, in fact, a Kant complex. Uh, that is uh, an infinity category where I can also fill every uh, outer arm. And uh, who says Kant complex has simplicial homotopy groups, and I can compute them explicitly. Moving on to uh, Morse theory, uh, I will first uh, say a few words about associated hydra and multiple hydra. So something remarkable about A infinity structures uh, being, uh, uh, being it algebra or morphisms is that they are encoded by families of polytopes. There, is a, there exists a collection of polytopes, which are called the associahedra, that encode we, the A infinity equations between A infinity algebras. Uh, that, this means that uh, these polytopes have dimension n minus two, and that their boundary are modeled on the A infinity equations for uh, A infinity algebras. So these are the first three instances. Uh, dimension zero uh, corresponds to uh, two corolla. Dimension uh, one corresponds to uh, three, three corolla. And on the vertices, I blow up uh, my three corolla exactly once. And dimension two corresponds to a four corolla. And I blow up uh, on, on the edges, I blow up my four corolla exactly once. Same goes for A infinity morphisms, which are this time encoded by the multiply hydra. Uh, so these polytopes have this time dimension n minus one because my morphisms have, have degree one minus n. And the boundary, their boundary is again modeled on the A infinity equations for A infinity morphisms. So in dimension zero, I only have uh, F1. In dimension two, I have the two colored color of parity two. On the left vertex, uh, I blow up below the gauge. On the right vertex, I blow up above the gauge. And in dimension two, the two colored three corolla, upper on the upper edges, I blow up exactly once below the gauge. And on the lower, the lower edges, I blow up exactly once above the gauge. And uh, in fact, uh, now that I have defined higher morphisms, I would like to define uh, polytopes that uh, encode them. And uh, such polytopes exist. The natural candidate is delta n times jm, because jm, uh, JM being the multiplier, because uh, the multiplier encode A infinity morphisms, and n morphisms simply corresponds to adding simplicial combinatorics to uh, A infinity morphisms. So a uh, naive candidate will be delta n times jm. But there is some refinement to do. And in fact, I proved that uh, there is there exists a refined polytopal subdivision of uh, this uh, product polytope, which encodes exactly the A infinity equations for n morphisms between A infinity algebras. And uh, I, will, I call these polytopes uh, with uh, the refine uh, subdivisions, uh, the n multiplier. Uh, some I show you some pictures very quickly. So delta one times j two, I have refined the subdivision here. Delta two times j two, I've refined the subdivision on the lower part. 
and uh, delta one times J3, and here the subdivision is refined even more. Uh, and finally, for um, the application of this entire algebra in, uh, in Morse theory, so what's the starting question to um, the applications of infinity algebras and more and morphisms between them in Morse theory? So notice that uh, if I consider a Morse function on an oriented closed Riemannian manifold, the Morse cochains form a deformation retract of the singular cochains. Uh, this was shown in Hutchings in a lecture notes by Hutchings, for instance. And <clears throat> uh, this simply means that the Morse code chains and the singular code chains fit into such a diagram where uh, P, I, and H uh, satisfy some relations uh, uh, that are modeled on um, <clears throat> deformation retracts in uh, topology. So but I have some more information. I know that the singular code chains are uh, a DG algebra, differential graded algebra with the cup product. And there is a homo uh, theorem called the homotopy transfer theorem that tells me that uh, when I have an associative algebra on the left of the homotopy retract diagram, I can naturally transfer it to an A infinity algebra structure on uh, the right part. So on the Morse code chains here. Uh, this is purely algebraic, uh, nothing geometric there. And so this is not totally satisfactory because the um, differential on the Morse cochains is defined by a count of moduli spaces of gradient trajectories. And uh, I would then like to know if it is possible to define uh, geometrically, so by counting moduli spaces, uh, higher multiplications on uh, sister F that uh, fit into a, a structure of A infinity algebra. So not, I'm not happy with uh, the fact that uh, sister F is an A infinity algebra by some uh, abstract algebraic theorem. I want to construct it explicitly by counting moduli spaces. So this question was solved by Abu Zaid uh, 10 years ago, but she drew from earlier works by uh, Fukaya on uh, Morse quantization. And uh, he used uh, moduli spaces of perturbed most gradient trees to do that. And uh, in fact, I prove uh, in my papers that uh, given two most functions f and g, uh, one can always construct uh, n morphisms between their most coaching complexes, sister f and sister g, uh, endowed with their the Abu Zaid's a infinity algebra structure. Uh, again, through account of uh, perturbed moduli spaces of perturbed most gradient trees. And uh, this all stems from the fact that um, the associate can be realized as the compactified moduli spaces of uh, stable metric Riemann trees. And uh, the multiplier can be realized as the compactified moduli spaces of stable two colored metric Riemann trees. So, uh, two colored metric ribbon tree simply corresponds to the data of an uh, underlying metric ribbon tree and of a length lambda that represent a gauge dividing uh, the uh, metric tree into two colors. And um, so for some further directions, it is quite clear that uh, given two compact symplectic manifolds, one should always be able to construct uh, uh, with some additional uh, technical properties, maybe. One should be always be able to construct n morphisms between their Fukaya categories. So this time, uh, through counts of um, moduli spaces of uh, quilted disks. Um, there is also the question to know now that I have defined uh, a for instance, a infinity morphisms uh, between uh, Morse um, <clears throat> three different three different Morse cochain complexes, so such that they fit <clears throat> into the following diagram, can it always be filled by an a infinity homotopy? That this means can uh, is the algebraic composition mu one two with mu zero one always homotopic to uh, mu zero two? Uh, this is work in progress, and uh, this is uh, linked to some similar questions in uh, 
paper by Mao, Verheim, and Woodward on the quilted floor cohomology. And uh, there might uh, also be links between the n multiple hydra and uh, the two associate hydra of Batman. Uh, but uh, yes, the, I haven't really inspected this, uh, this matter yet. Thanks for your attention. Okay, thank you very much, Thibaut. Questions? Sorry, so can I uh, ask a question? Yes, of course. Hi. Uh, so, uh, so can you, so did you say that you constructed an, uh, like a anamorphism for two different Morse functions on the same manifold or did you say you didn't? Yes, I did. I did. Sorry. If it's so why is this, yeah. why is the sec, why is the thing that you mentioned at the end significantly more difficult than that? Uh, this one you mean? Yeah. Uh, it's because for this problem, so infinity morphisms are defined by counting uh, perturbed Morse gradient trees that are modeled on uh, this uh, type of uh, metric trees, so uh, of two, two color metric trees. And when you um, consider uh, uh, the composition, you have uh, a fur. You, you would like to consider um, moduli spaces of uh, trees with two gauge this time of uh, three colored trees. And uh, when you study the compactification of such a moduli space, uh, it does not uh, behave correctly uh, under, uh, in uh, its boundary, there are fiber products that arise. And uh, this is not the same problem as in, uh, as in uh, simply constructing constructing n morphisms between uh, uh, between two Morse code chains. I don't know if. Uh... Yes, yes, yes. No, thank you. Thank you. Are the n morph it was it was higher morphisms from Fook M to Fook N? Do you mean that? Uh, no, the, they are not induced from a map N to N. They, are, they would be defined uh, by um, considering uh, perturbation data indexed by uh, the N simplex on the, the quilted disks. And uh, I wouldn't say that they will be canonical either. There's a question in the chat. Yeah, know. this is the one that. Uh, oh, one is just okay. Um, okay. If there are no more questions, then I will just stop the recording and then we'll just leave to have informal discussions. So thanks again, Sipout, for the talk, and thanks mm. everyone else. Um, and thank you all for coming.